Hey, everybody. Welcome to Making Awesome, the podcast where we talk about making cool things. This is part 11, and today we're talking about product development. Did I do Episode it? 11, I'll take it. Good enough. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's, a, it's similar. I feel, can we call, can we start saying the podcast is in chapters? Because I feel like that would feel Chapter. really, yeah, Chapter you know, 11. it's just like, when when I see a TV show that's segmented into chapters, it feels way more, you know, like, you know ooh. what? You're the branding expert. And because I'm recording it live, let's do it. You know what? Let's <laughs> let's do it. We're changing episode chapter. to chapter. Chapter 11. Uh, Done. Tad's, Tad's it's real. journey. T- uh, Tad's demise. <laughs> chapter 11. <laughs> chapter 11 bankruptcy. Oh, no, 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 no. Maybe we should change the chapters after chapter 11. I was about to say, it's (laughs) unlucky to do it on this one. Yeah, let's not, especially that we're recording this, uh, spoiler alert, on Friday the 13th. In 2020. (laughs) What a a horrible idea we just... Too oh late. God. Too late. Yeah. It's been changed. Uh, hey, uh, unless I, unless I kill the recording and we re- and we redo it, it's been changed to chapter eleven. It's over. No, I'm cool with it. Let's uh, you know what? Let, let's do it live. Let's do it live. So yeah. thank you all for joining us. Uh, if you're listening audio only, please don't forget if you're on iTunes to subscribe and leave us a review. Five stars only, because if it's less than that, just come to us first, okay? Anything <laughs> less than five stars hurts us or whatever the hell Apple uses these days. I don't know. We're all Android here, except Thomas. The designer's Apple. That's what we do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and if you're on Spotify, please go ahead and follow us. Uh, and if you're on uh, YouTube watching our, well, I'm not going to say beautiful faces, but our faces nonetheless, we're here. Okay. Uh, go ahead and give us a subscribe, a like, and comment. I don't know. Tell us your favorite color. I, 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 I don't know. Something. Anyways, as always, this podcast is supported by 3D Musketeers. You can visit us at 3dmusketeers.com. There's a little ticker if you're watching us on YouTube going across the screen (laughs) because, ooh, and he even did it the right direction. Nice, Tad. Nice. It's funny when when, when, when people go the wrong way. Oh, yeah. Um, But this one is all about product development, and I think we're going to be able to do it in three episodes, but we want to kind of give – a, an understanding of product development, what it looks like from the perspective of someone who is just starting. Because if you are listening to us, if you are watching us, chances are you might fit into that category. So let's kind of get into the weeds here. And the first thing that people will want to say is, well, wait, how the hell do I get started? And the answer is just freaking do it get a notebook graph paper get a graph paper notebook trust us it it will pay dividends in the future and just start writing ideas put it next to your you know put it on your next to your bed on your nightstand with Mm -hmm. a indelible pen and a glass of water because hydration um but that way, no matter what time of the day it is, you can go, you can get it, and you can start writing it down. Thomas, if you can talk to us a little bit about the importance of this information, because some people say less is more. But in this instance, I'm going to have to disagree. Less is more until the end, right? Because, I mean, the, there's this whole thing I could go into about minimalism and why it's more complicated than people think it is. But it's always – it's all about the idea right so right. even if you come to the end solution and the end solution looks simple the i guarantee you if it's good the ideation that came before it was a lot and the mm-hmm. most of it and that's honestly what you pay for a lot when you come into good design uh, at least on my end but i'm also going to just quickly talk about the importance of having a sketchbook uh, in general which is the same thing as having something like graph paper or whatever um just keep it i have i think like i think i have like four sketchbooks just next to my desk at all times just Just because you're disorganized and need multiple books does not mean everybody else does okay yeah well some of them (laughs) are already full but but yeah so just like keeping your ideas oh that's um, cute show that to us little bulldog oh oh love um but a lot of the time i'm just writing stuff 
like people think that sketchbooks are like supposed to look pretty and have drawings but like oftentimes it's just like you know what are my ideas collage is mm -hmm. good but um that is important to say that writing down all your ideas whatever is going to really help you decide what's good and what's not or what you want to move forward with and what you don't and it also comes into play when you do come into contact with either a graphic designer or a product designer or someone who is going to either if you're not doing it you're going to have someone make the thing that you've thought of right mm -hmm. so having way more about what your thing is whether that be graphic design whether that be product design whatever it is is going to help that person make your thing at you know it's funny because people will come to graphic designers and I have to speak from my own experience. And I think it's probably similar with product design in a lot of ways. And people will come to you and say like, okay, you know, just like do what you want. Or like, I trust what you're going to do with this. And you're like, okay, that's great. Except that's not what we're here for. Except I'm trying to make the thing that you want. Of course we did that for the podcast, but you were, you were already involved in the podcast. You knew about well, it. And, it and wasn't that, something that just came to you and said, do it. And, you know, we get that same thing with product development. People come to us with really ideas, and they're like, well, what would you do? No. I don't no. know. This is not our job. Our well, job no. is to make your product, not ours. Yeah. If we and were to make few, our product, we're going to patent it. <laughs> and there's a few places where, yeah, uh, professional expertise matters, right? Yep. Someone can come to me, and they have a perfect idea of what they want, and they're like, mm. yeah, it's – you know, it's a bird and it's on a twig and I want it to say my company's name, except I don't know what it should look like in the end. Or I don't know why the type shouldn't be curly. But at least they have cursive. a general sense of the thing. And then I can give them professional advice based on what I know from my expertise. But yeah, you know, more is better of knowing what it does, how it does it, why it does it. You know, all these things is like, right. Yeah. yeah. And, and drawings are huge. It, even if they're bad um that's insanely important some i've gotten the funniest made in powerpoint logo sketches before and Same. but i love them because it's telling me it's giving me a blueprint right yeah and it gives I you can, a direction and oftentimes i'll make suggestions that don't look like that because sometimes people don't really know what they want but having mm. that blueprint is huge because i get an idea of what someone wants and not right, making yeah. stuff into the void without any guidance because that's the worst and most frustrating thing you can do well, <laughs> this is absolutely true also for product design all of this because you know if you're coming up with an invention you know draw some kind of a rough sketch of it you know i mean this is unrelated but like the millennium falcon the way they came up with that was they demonetized <laughs> there it is mm -hmm. We talked no, about not. we talked about Disney. That's it. Cease and desist. Bring it on. Talk <laughs> about not reinvent. Um, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But like they, George Lucas and who was he with? Um, the other one, Lawrence Kasdan. Maybe they were like had it a. It was Jar Jar and Binks. And they it shoved was... two toothpicks with olives into the side of a burger, and they're like, "Oh, it's it's a spaceship." You know, it could be something good. really simple. Um, when you're coming up with uh, ideas for something you want to make, you know, but at least you have something to look at and something right. to show other people. Because if it's in, if it, all it is is in here, yeah. it's not going to get anywhere. And and it will change. Yeah. Yes, but if it doesn't change, in, there's a problem. Then something mm. is wrong. Yeah, yeah. no <laughs> then idea. You should be perfect. doing it yourself. Yeah. Look, <laughs> yeah. if if you come up with a perfect idea first, you don't need us. You don't need mm -mm. me. You don't need tad over here i did it i did it i pointed the wrong direction because for me tad is over here <laughs> you don't need tad thomas is below me so i always know where he is you don't need thomas either if you can get it on the first try great spoiler alert you you probably can't if you can great we will gladly eat our humble pie as you make your millions of dollars and we watch you from the sidelines but the like the uh, in all likelihood, it's not possible. And the reason why we suggest graph paper rather than a sketchbook, sketchbooks are great, but having that dimensional accuracy is kind of nice, right? If someone can draw a circle and use a compass with a defined center line, now all of a sudden when you send that to us, when you scan that drawing or take a picture with your cell phone, you can say, hey, each of the little blocks is 
10 millimeters, an inch, two inches, uh, an eighth of an inch. Now we have something to work off of. And when you're writing, it gives you nice lines to write on. It's so much, so much easier. If you want to hate yourself, you can do one letter per box, like it's Sudoku, but with letters. Don't be that person, Don't please. Don't be that person. No. It's, it's, uh, it's a little anal retentive. Wow, don't at me to both of you. <laughs> then again, I'm not an inventor. Uh, I've tried, uh, but you know, the devil's in the details, and that's why we started 3D Musketeers, because if we can help people get through those pain points that I got stuck on, then hey, we're doing something right, aren't we? But, you know, the the importance of having this is grand. Um, so a lot of what we're going to talk about we're talking specifically about the laws in Florida, even though one third of this podcast is only in Florida. There's a, another third of it's in Oregon, and the other third is somewhere in Montana, I think. <laughs> right? I'm not going to say where, because it's more fun making it sound like I'm in some like shack in the middle of nowhere. Because the three of us don't have unique enough names that it's not difficult to find us, right? That's true. We all had to have like crazy non you know non normal names that are extremely rare or spelled rarely promise <laughs> anyways um all of this will be important for your provisional and at least in the state of florida your provisional is first to file do not you know what let me step back we're getting a little ahead of ourselves because we need to do the game plan before we get into pack to say I know, I know. See, I told you, Tad. I told you this was your job. You had one job. Should have reined you in. You have one job. You had to rein me in here. <laughs> um, you gotta, you gotta understand your product. Right. In that game, so you got plan. an idea. What are you gonna do with it? Right. Can you get a prototype? Do people want it? Just because you're solving a problem, and please, pay attention. Just because you are solving a problem does not mean that people are going to pay for it. Just because it is a problem in your life does not mean that others will pay for it. So don't think that you're going to sell the next billion dollar deal. It's not reasonable. Might you sell 100,000 units? Hey, you could. Easily. Th that, that could be a few million dollars. But you're not the next Jeff Bezos, statistically speaking, okay? We are yeah. not here to blow smoke up your ass. This is something that very few other product development companies will do. They will blow smoke up your ass. They'll make you feel good about yourself. Oh, you're looking really nice today, Mr. Swanson. <laughs> Thanks, Grant. Ron Swanson doesn't care, <laughs> okay? Thanks, Jimmy. You're here to make cool stuff. You're here to change your life and the lives of others. The one thing you should be able to count on is the companies that you work with to at least be freaking honest with you. Mm -hmm. This is part of what we do. We do the one of the first initial meetings that we have with our customers is an idea review. We talk about market viability because if your product is not marketly viable to us, we want to let you know. The last thing that we want to do is run you through this whole gamut. You pay us non-trivial amounts of money to do it. And then it not sell. And you come back and say, well, it's your fault. No, we told you in the beginning. Look, if you get offended because we don't like your idea, you're probably not the right customer for us. Go find someone who's going gonna, is gonna to charge you $15,000 and is going to blow smoke up your ass the whole time. That's not who we are, right? This podcast has an industrial designer. It has a 2D branding graphic design wizard, and it has Grant. And <laughs> between the three of us, we've seen and worked with so many people across so many different fields that while we don't know every market, we know enough of them to keep ourselves alive. And if you have data that points otherwise, you probably should have told us before we got into that meeting, huh? Yeah. Market viability is one of the biggest things that most inventors miss. They go right to, like I did, the patenting. 
they want to look at protecting themselves. Let me clue you in. Gentlemen, together, nobody is going to steal your idea unless it is successful. Thank successful. you, gentlemen, for, yep. for joining me on that. That was – got it. I, I, I felt it. I felt it. Of course, we did not <laughs> rehearse that. No. Yeah, Grant, and I didn't as, even... as far as <laughs> microphones and latency goes, that would have yeah. sounded like – garbage if we tried. <laughs> even if we were perfectly in sync there's no way we could have done it i thought you no. were going to edit all of these you can fix it you could fix oh. it you could do it in post they we'll could fix do it in post they could do anything in post can't they uh okay i'm t technically yeah but how much <laughs> money do you have to technically do anything in post? my budget is zero and i want everything <laughs> <laughs> well we get that too yes that's the other get thing that too Tad, talk about that, please, because I'm going to rant and I'm going to get pissed. Please talk about these say. budgets. And, 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 uh, talk about well, understanding here. So you've got your idea for a product. And, and like Grant, you were saying, you got to, you know, think about for a minute if it's something that people would buy. If you would go to the store, what aisle would you find it in? You know, that kind of thing. And then uh, if you don't already have an idea of this, you want to think, well, what's it going to be made of, you know, because the sort of the class of material that you're looking to make something out of is also going to determine how much it costs to make. Is it metal? Is it plastic? Is it wood? You know, these kinds of things need to be thought of before you go too far down the line, because you don't want to come up with that later, you know, and that will also determine how easy is it going to be for you to get a prototype. If it's made of wood, you could, and you're even decently handy, you could probably make it yourself. Yep. You know, to get your first prototype. If it's metal, eh, it's a little more of a toss up. And if it's plastic, that's usually going to involve a lot more um, effort. Yeah, you oddly, know? the plastic prototypes are some of the most complicated ones because there's, while 3D printing is affordable, you can go out and buy a 3D printer for like 250 bucks. You can also mm. burn your house down for 250 bucks too. Yeah, you got to be careful. Right. Um, yeah, and then budget wise, you got to be. This is the thing that people don't want to tell inventors right out the gate. But if you're going to create a product and bring it from idea all the way to, you know, full production and selling it at, you know, every big box store, you should be prepared to spend quite a bit of money, probably a lot more than you think. But there is the potential that you could recoup that and much, much more. Absolutely. So you got to... Let's say your budget is $1,000 and you want to sell to Walmart. You need at least two more zeros, and yeah. that's before the decimal point. It, it, what, if, you, if you think that you can create and sell a product for less than $10,000, you've got another thing coming. Well, it's like anything else. It's like you wouldn't open a restaurant for anything less than multiple tens of thousands of dollars. Right. It's any other business. I mean, wait. You can. You totally Well, yeah. Can. You could have a – you could and have like a hot dog stand. Hell, especially you, right now, you could probably get restaurants cheap, 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 cheap. You could, you could have a graphic design business. There's a little to no overhead on that. What one. overhead do you have, Thomas? Eating. <laughs> no, graphic Breathing. designers just eat ramen noodles. <laughs> what is that? Twenty five cents a day. I actually ate that tonight. So. <laughs> Except I, except I ordered out, so it was expensive. Ramen. Is it the Hokkaido oh, place? Oh, it hits his camera. Yeah, it is. Oh, that's yeah, actually I hit my headphone cord. Oh, this headphone cord is really strong. Yeah, dude, <laughs> but, my my headphone cord's like crazy long. <laughs> I usually have a really long. I one, have no but... cords. Oh wow! I and yet Thomas and I have the best audio. Oh, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm picking up from the mic, not the. Uh, well, see, the, I, I get to hear the sultry sounds of your voice clearer than you get to hear ours. How does that make you feel? No comment. <laughs> oh, I stand corrected. Anyways, yes, the, the, the big deal here is you can't I, – I, I hate talking in absolutes because there are some instances where, yes, you can make Only amazing things. Only a deals in absolutes. Right, right, and – by and large, you are unable to produce a hardcore product for less than $10,000. It's just not going to happen. 
we've had some products come in here that are extremely simple where a mold would cost even in the united states a grand to make and you can shoot a hundred thousand of these pieces a day was that a really saleable product probably not considering it's been like three years and we haven't heard much from the guy yeah i mean you know proof is in the pudding mm -hmm. um but a lot of a lot of these designs if it involves electronics 25 grand minimum just don't oh, yeah. even just on the product development side of it though like what would we need to spend at 3d musketeers well i hate it because the answer is it depends mm. it always depends the the more complex your product is the more money it's going to cost right time is money um you know and before you bring on a company like 3d musketeers or any product development firm for that matter you should have an idea if people want to buy your product and before you before you say well of course they do i don't want you asking your facebook friends i don't want you asking your mother i don't want you asking your family because they're going to be nice to you i want you asking that bully from high school that you friended on facebook late night when you had a little too many to drink to see how crappy he's done in life that's the person i want you to find those are the types of people we want you to get in front of because if you're those those could be the people that are going to be your 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 consumer you need to figure out what your target market is find people in that target market and just ask them don't tell them too much about your product because you have no protection at this point and at this point it is very simple for someone to steal your idea and run off with it it's unlikely but it's possible you don't know who those people are going to be in that room so you have to assume that all of them are jeff bezos so be careful but you need to ask them questions like you know let's say you have a product that works and i'm gonna i'm gonna cheat because we had an inventor today talking about a product that works with a yeti mug so talk about some of the problems that people experience with yeti mugs and particular industries right don't give away what you're making but you need to find out if the problem that they have is one that actually matches what your device solves and if none of them get to it say hey would you buy a product that could do something like this mm -hmm. and you and look the best case scenario you get a 50 50 split of yes and no because the yeses are great you really don't care about them right now you care about the ones that told you no right Those you the need ones that, that are constructive most feedback mm -hmm. you do you absolutely do. Th that is so important in this process. Um, Thomas, any other recommendations? Because, of course, we, we just went through this with 3D Musketeers, but I'm sure you go through this with your clients all the time when you're dealing with branding and product and uh, like graphic design. What are some other good tips to kind of making sure that this is going to flush out well? Because, mm -hmm. of course, this isn't just a product. It's a brand. My brand. My brand. Yeah, I mean, it comes down to... I've talked about this before, but like, uh, you know, if I just asked my peer group if a logo or something was good, uh, a lot of the time I would probably hear like yes from people because I'm a designer making a logo as a designer wants to make a logo. And if mm. I'm showing that to other designers, they're going to think it's cool from my perspective, right? Because right, you all have the same sensibilities. It, yeah, it, it, with certain things, right? I mean, obviously, there's plenty of times when people say, like, no, Thomas, that's bad. Like, go do anything but that, which yeah. has happened before. Um, but, you know, it's kind of like ask the people that are actually going to be consuming the thing that you're making. You know, it's because, you know, my design work is not just going to be put in front of other designers all day. Um, so you kind of have to go and see, you know, who actually wants or who actually likes looking at what you're making or uh, what's already working in the industry. Right. You know, I mean, a lot of the time, like, uh, uh, you know, they tell you in art school, I think they say copy like an artist, I think is what they no steal like an artist is what it's called. <laughs> um, because uh, it, it's it's not realistic to think that you're going to make something that is entirely unique because there's a reason we've been building on things for as long as we have to get to a point where we're making things that we know work. And yeah, they're unique and sure they are unique in a lot of ways, but to say that like no logos ever use the typeface that we're using in the 3d Musketeers mm -hmm. logo would be crazy. Yeah. And to say that people, you know, the, 
way that we got to this illustration style in 3D Musketeers hasn't been used somewhere else? No. Is it unique to 3D Musketeers? Yeah. But a lot of people throughout history have been working really hard to get us to a point in graphic design right now. And so it's all those building blocks. So like also, I mean, as far as product development goes, what has worked in other products? Are there mm. products like yours? What can you use from those products that obviously wouldn't steal or wouldn't be like ripping some idea off, but something that's already been done that's going to improve or is going to inform your product or tell you the failures too. What hasn't right. worked? Has your product been made before and someone has already <laughs> failed before you? It happens in design all the time. Uh, you know, Better like, to learn from them. Learn yeah, those lessons. I, I, oh, you yeah. got to learn on both sides, you know, and, and yeah. like... That's it, a cheap lesson to learn right there. Exactly. Well, and a, a lot it, of times. It, you know, it, it's, it doesn't pay to reinvent the wheel. No. It's all just... You know, uh, within the realm, I mean, within like the bounds of legality and patent law. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, thing. obviously, always take that into account. And we have to, too. You know, I say that, yeah. like, they say steal like an artist. We're obviously never stealing anything. But you have to be yeah. aware of what's out there. Um, and Cite I think your just, sources. Like, yeah. yeah and and just being you know immerse yourself in that community of things you're trying to make for it's going to be really hard for you to say make you know if you're not part of the community you're making a product for you don't understand those people and you might mm. just be making a product into the ether just like if you're not as a designer researching the community that you're making something that is targeted towards then you're just making stuff into the ether that right. might technically work, but may not sell to those people. And that's such a well, downfall of, of, of inventors. They just think they have the next million dollar idea. They've done absolutely zero market research or the market research they've done is minimal. If you tell me that you tested 94 people and you had a 90% success rate, <coughs> Pfizer, oh, excuse me, gosh. Oh, I've got that such an, sound a, like a, a respiratory uh, infe infection today. It doesn't sound like a normal distribution to me. No. And no. it's so funny how you put that out the day after Joe Biden was called to be president. It's so funny how that works. It's like you did a pump and dump on your own damn stock that I missed <laughs> out on, so I'm not happy about it. <laughs> Anyways, we're not going to talk about that because that just no. makes me salty. But do so Grant, more. The more, the merrier. What? So Grant, say say you've done all these steps. Say you have done your research. You've fleshed out your idea. You have some you know basis for starting. What at that point do you do? Because you then you mentioned earlier you've got to protect it to a degree, but at the same time, if your idea is successful, no one can really steal it from you. So the the next where... steps involve a little bit of safety. Yes, <laughs> gentlemen, I brought safety glasses just for this occasion. Because if your safety squints are not engaged, always have safe, always have your safety glasses. Two condoms, mother on speed dial. That, my friends, is a very good AVE reference. And if you don't know AVE and you are listening to this podcast, when you're done listening, go take a look. Arduino versus Electron. I don't know. Very vulgar. <laughs> but oh, but the best. Simply protection, the best. protection, 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 protection. The one thing that inventors really harp on where they really shouldn't, okay? Let's talk provisional patents. First, cheap like Borsch, absolutely affordable. You can go to the USPTO right the frig now and file a provisional patent. The cool thing about a provisional patent, it is never opened. They do not look at it because they don't give a damn. A provisional patent is used to see who was first, right? Who's on first? It's just a okay? record. That's all that matters. And in the event of a litigation, then the provisional is opened as a means to see who filed first. Florida is a first to file state. Your state may vary. Please check your local listings and, and laws to make sure you're not doing something stupid. A provisional provides you with a one year insulation. If you have a provisional, you do not need a non disclosure. And for the love of of all things holy, stop making people sign non-disclosures before you talk to them. Do you want to know how you get people pissed off at you before they talk with you? Make them sign a non-disclosure. That's how you piss people off. Look, mm -hmm. once you get into the weeds of it, totally understandable, right? There are many times where we will look at Inventor and say, you need to put us under a non-disclosure now. 
Right. Because it's at a stage where it needs that. Right. But a lot of times things will Don't come to us very, here. yeah, very early stages where we need to do a ton of research. We need to kind of right. talk with our contacts to get subject matter ex experts involved. And a lot of the times, if you're, we're under an NDA at that point, our hands are tied and it becomes a whole bunch of hoops to jump through yep. to get any kind of progress. And it's not like we're just playing fast and loose and like, look at what this guy made. Look, check this out. It's like, no, it's like, I have this particular detail that I need more information about. And we had this exact difficult. problem. We had someone come to us with a, with a fabric product, right? It, it was a clothing product. I happen to know a guy that's really good at clothing. He just won like four grand from uh, from an incubator to build his brand. It's uh, Jack Miller of Pock It P O C K I T. Uh, you can look that up if you want. What's up, Jack? Just gave you some free marketing, buddy. A little bit of quid pro quo would never hurt. <laughs> but uh, actually, we're gonna have him on at some point. I've talked to him about it. He wants to come on. Um, really, really cool dude and has a really cool story because he's not your traditional inventor and I think he really went about it the smart way. But, you know, the fact that this person with the fabric put us under that NDA, I can't go talk to Jack about this because now what – I don't know what their product is and I've already said I'm not going to talk about it. So where do we define proprietary knowledge, right? Is clothing proprietary? Well, Jack's particular clothing, his shirt, his shorts, they're not in any way, shape, or form innovative. They have a pocket. That is what makes them innovative. And yes, ladies, it's on the ladies' clothing too. Huh? huh? Uh, look at that. Jack, you just got a thousand sales because I just told them that there are pockets on the li on the women's clothing. But It's a travesty that it's it, not It is. More it's common. an absolute travesty. But what he did is he has a different type of material on the sleeve, and your phone or whatever goes into – um, the sleeve or on your leg for leggings and it's a material that grips the skin so the phone's not rah, 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 while you're running it sticks to you and it's bloody freaking brilliant and when i saw that i said jack i need an nda now you have an idea you need to patent it i'm gonna walk you through this and i held his hand it was really cool it was myself and a and a co-worker uh, I guess now former coworker because he's no longer with that company. Um, that we're we're kind of helping him and um, some things happen. I've been working with Jack privately back and forth on Instagram of all places. I don't think I have Jack's phone number, but I have his Instagram and he's been a really awesome guy. But um, you know, it's it's things like that where if this company did not put us under an NDA before we started talking to them, I could say, hey, let me bring in someone that I think can really help you out. His name is Jack. He's got all these contacts for making prototypes and then going into full production. Why don't you guys talk it out? He can give you some some advice. And, you know, if there's anything that we can help you out with, come on back to us. Mm -hmm. But instead, what happened was they were super defensive. They gave me no useful information. And I had to basically pummel it out of them to find out that we clothing is not really our thing. We can do the CAD modeling for it, but... Eh, so can basically any clothing shop, right? Yeah. Um, at, at that point, an inventor is basically just cutting themselves off from right. opportunity. You're kneecapping yourself without yeah. even knowing it. And look, there are times and places for it. If you are going to talk, like I had a gentleman, I kid you not, who called me and said, Nestle wants my idea. I need you to make it. Okay. Can you send me an email with all that? Well, I don't have email. The government doesn't let me have it. That was like the third thing he told me. And you can tell how the rest of that conversation went. Yeah, that's... ha. Huh. Never did provide me with anything. Haven't heard from the guy. Aww. And, you know, didn't pay because, you know, he's like, well, I'll give you a percentage. Well, I'm not going to take a percentage unless you can prove to me that Nestle actually wants to buy your product. It, look, if you can prove to me that you have a standing order from Nestle, done. I will gladly take a percentage of those sales because... I'm not an idiot. <laughs> Dare I say, Florida man strikes again. Yeah. And Zephyr Hills, you know, which is a town over from where we're located, is owned by Nestle. Well, the town isn't, but the Zephyr Hills Bottling Company is located huh, conveniently in Zephyr Hills, Florida. It's like the name just stuck, <laughs> uh, which is actually pretty cool because my well that I have at my home 
is from the same aquifer. So the water that I drink is the same water that you pay for. <laughs> Maybe it's a little less filtered. Don't care. Anyways, um, let's talk about the poor man's patents because we actually had someone mention this the other day. Actually, mm. it was that gentleman that mentioned the poor man's patent. And if you don't know what a poor man's patent is, don't waste your time. It's Grant talking here. You know I'm going to explain it. And probably in way more detail than you care to know. A poor man's patent used to be a way to cheat the system. To where you could write everything down that you wanted, put it in an envelope, and mail it to yourself certified mail. So you have a full tracking of everything and you never open it. So now you have proof that you did it on that date. In the state of Florida, that is no longer valid, and it is generally frowned upon by anybody in the industry because it's not called the poor man's patent for no good reason. Mm -hmm. If you can't spend $225 or whatever the hell it costs these days on getting a provisional patent, you don't want to hear this, now is not the right time. Now is not the right time for you to be inventing. Yeah. Look, like I said once, I'll say it again, we are not here to blow smoke up your ass. This is not what we do. You need to make sure that you're going about things systematically. And if you can't validly spend $200 on your product, one, y y there is no place at 3D Musketeers. Look, if you want to call us, we can talk about it real quick. But product development with us starts at generally in the $700 range, right? And that's what prices are currently subject to change, TM. And, you know, if, if you're watching us on YouTube, you'll see our new classes are coming soon. Yes, you heard it here for the world to know. Bruce is really bad still. <laughs> what did you do? That's from when I was in the hospital. They missed really? the vein. Yeah, they punctured the vein. So that's Ooh. that's internal bleeding. If anyone didn't know that, a bruise is just internal bleeding. <laughs> yeah, that just makes me look like a like a, uh, a druggie. <laughs> I'm not. Like promise. I was hos like. I was hospitalized last week. I talked about it in the last week. Doesn't make sense to people. I was hospitalized. Um, like the seventh, I think. I don't know. Yeah. I'm fine. Well, I'm not fine. I'm not as bad as we thought. You're not. There in, you go. You're not. You're, you're in stable condition. Uh, if you see me walk, I'm definitely not stable. <laughs> and look, I'm a small not business nonsense. owner. There is there is a bit of instability in all of us that are small business owners. But <laughs> th that poor man's patent, yes. I was what? just waving my hand as a small business owner and my instability. Well, you're a graphic designer. That just comes with the with the territory, too. Yeah. Do you agree that all small businesses should have an attorney, an accountant, and most importantly, a therapist? It's a good um, one. One of them. Looks at his watch. I don't know why. <laughs> you can pick one of those. You have one. I'm Which taking the therapist. Pick? Well, okay. I, I'm i really bad with accounting. <laughs> I took the accountant first. I got the therapist later. Um, and the attorney every now and then when we need him. But, um, you know, the, the poor man's patent is – it's not good. It's not going to help your case. It's going to make you look like a fool in court if you need to use it. And if you are – if you are at a position where you need to defend yourself, if you don't have $100,000, you've lost. Straight right. up, you've lost. Because, oh, there have been so many cases where even people who are in the right are are still ruled against – because they don't have the money to sustain the legal defense that would be necessary. Yep. A lot of the time, if you're, you know, in the sights of some giant corporation, they can just bury you in lawyer money. Yeah. Because they have more of it than you do. And that's not a matter of having your idea protected. It's not. And it's truly a shame because there should be – there should be more out there, right? Mm -hmm. um, but there isn't. There, there, there's no, there's no help. And as Childish Gambino said, "This is America," and unfortunately, mm. this is the kind of crap you have to deal with. If your yeah. idea is truly really good, 
you need a patent, a real patent. And we're going to talk about that next episode. But we don't want to get into, into that too much today. Oh, God, I yeah. hit my microphone. Oh, I'm so sorry. It was fine. It was fine. Okay. All right. Just it was barely sure. noticeable. But, you know, there there are some there are some things here, right? And, you know, the, the notebook is... This episode is all-encompassing, right? Without a good notebook, you can't file a good provisional patent. Without a good provisional patent, you're not really protecting yourself of anything. And without good market research, your patent is worthless. Patents are expensive. Provisional patents are not. You can file unlimited number of provisional patents. It is the most recent one that matters. Or the one that most closely, I guess technically the one that most closely matches your patent. Mm. If you do not file your true patent within 12 months of filing your provisional, your provisional is null and void, and you must start over again. So if you want to extend it, you cannot just file a provisional every month and give yourself indefinite protection. Also, that's a lot of money. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. Don't be stupid. You wait for your provisional. Can you to file the same one at the end of the 12 months again? Technically, because they don't open it, yes. You're yeah. not supposed to because it can be invalidated and say that you're just copying yourself. So, but generally speaking, if you spent an entire year and your product has not changed, then you haven't done anything, mm -hmm. right? 3D Musketeers has changed five times in this year alone because I didn't want to lose the business, but... That's a whole different story. Yay, COVID. I mean, geez, I'll, I'll, if, if you it, look, if you haven't watched any of our episodes and you're just tuning into this one, we highly recommend, if nothing else, you at least check out the branding episodes to see what Thomas did. Because, <laughs> damn. And if you have watched the branding episodes and you haven't gone and voted, what's wrong with you? I actually put all that stuff up there. I might have done it on Friday, even though I said I was going to do it on last Sunday, but we're not going to talk about that. I've had a week. <laughs> Every week has apparently been a week. I, I don't know, man. It, 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 it just keeps going that way, it seems. That's the whole year, so that's you're on true. the right track. Look, what century are we in? <sighs> I lost track. Alex Trebek died. I know. It's so sad. Look, it's we weren't going to get out of this just right away. I know. Bad things it, still there need was to some, happen. Some uh, what was the th what's the thing that Thanos says and he's like everything you know one soul for another that kind of thing. It's it's. Oh, yeah. I didn't see that one. Oh yeah. It was the one where the purple Hulk was mad at the Avengers, and then they all had a big fight at the end, and everyone collectively had an aneurysm because they were like, "Oh my God, this many superheroes on screen! You ever seen that before?" And then a bunch of money was made. I'm pretty sure that's how it went. <laughs> that is a beautiful synopsis of a movie I've never seen, but I'm pretty sure that is uh, mm. Avengers Infinity War. Yeah, yeah, you okay. got it. Okay. Yeah. We've we done enough Thanos gloves for me it. to at least understand that. No, yeah. the only reason I know that movie is because of all the movie props that we've done for, for users. Because unlike a lot of Marvel, well, I guess similar to a lot of Marvel movies, all the files were leaked, and so all the movie prop data is out there. If you knew where to look, you were able to find it. Um, yeah. We don't ask a lot of questions because you'd be surprised the people that actually give us parts these days. Mm. Uh, but, you know, protection is useful, right? Are you – look, I could wear safety glasses all damn day, and am I protecting my eyes? Yes, now you can see all the glare of all the lights that I have in here. But is this reasonable? Well, no, I'm not doing something where I could viably poke my eye out, he says as he viably pokes his eye out. Um, you know, but like when I'm using an X-Acto knife, or excuse me, a hobby knife, because otherwise I'd be giving out free advertising, or a deburring tool, or my blowtorch isn't near me, but... Those are times where, yeah, you put on the protection, okay? Look, do you put on a condom when you leave the house <laughs> just in case? No, that's stupid. Don't do that with non-disclosures. Don't do it. Also, don't leave condoms in your wallet. But that's 
that's a different podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um, nonetheless, look, there are times to be safe. There are times to trust. And there are times to talk. If you are an inventor, the best thing you can do is ask and ask and ask. If you are in the Tampa Bay area of Florida, because I guess there is another Tampa Bay. I didn't know this. Um, mm. If you are in the Tampa Bay region of Florida, I recommend you look up the Tampa Bay Inventors Council, of which I am one of the board members. Um, it's part of our commitment to inventors. If I'm going to spend my time on a board of directors to deal with an organization like this, it's because I care about inventors. I care about inventing. I care about you, the listener, the watcher, the hungry, the weary, the weak, the hungry. Did I say hungry? I'm saying it twice. Yes. <laughs> the inventor. <laughs> yes, the inventor. Because that's an elected position. I don't. I didn't just say, hey, would be in the board. And then I got on the board. No, it's an elected position. Dang uh, it. I was going to do that. I mean, I think we are missing a board member, so you might you might actually be able to get in. Time to slip into the Florida uh, Council of Created. Where you of don't Maine. live. Inventors Council. The Tampa Bay Inventors Council is there welcoming is. their newest member, Thomas. And he's going to talk about saws and things. <laughs> You know, I, I will say, um, oh, I'll see if I can pull it up real quick without screwing up the recording. Um, to see, we just had a really cool guest, which is awesome. Uh, we had, who was our guest? Uh, I can't easily find it. Ah, <laughs> it was Steve Greenberg. He's an amazing, award-winning author, TV personality, and expert on innovation and technology that can be seen every month with Hoda and Jenna on NBC's Today Show. He's appeared in the Dr. Oz Show, Hallmark's Chan Harm Hallmark Channel's Home and Family, and other national TV programs. He came on as a freaking guest to talk to everybody. That's dope. Okay, this guy's got plenty of other things to be doing other than dealing with our crap. And I'll tell you, unfortunately, the Tampa Bay Inventors Council is full of a lot of these inventors that we've kind of been talking about saying you should not do this. You know, people that are not... Are we good? Oh, the, the spool just, like, unrolled itself a little bit. Sorry. It just went... I'm like, excuse me. I saw it move, and I'm like, huh? I don't know if the I don't know if the microphone picked that up, but it was like a very I'd... satisfying whoosh sound, whoosh. like the filament broke. What was it? It's petg. A... It's petg. It shouldn't be broken. I was Anyways, gonna say that. The no Tampa, way. The Tampa Bay Inventors Council is unfortunately there's quite a few people in there that have ideas that they're unwilling to change they're unwavering and while i uh, certainly appreciate someone who's dedicated they've been dedicated to the same thing for 10 years and haven't sold a damn thing hmm. we're gonna give you a hmm. teaser for next episode but until you actually have sales you don't have an invention you have an idea and i've said this before and i will say it again ideas are worthless unless you execute Execution mm -hmm. is where it matters, right? It's a pain in the ass, right? Because. Well, if your idea just lives in your head forever, it's not going to go anywhere. You know, it's how it is. Right, right. I have trouble here because so many inventors find themselves caught in mm. this in this wedge because it is it's a wedge because it's really hard to get yourself out of it where they're so afraid of someone stealing their idea but they think they can change the world and they have no money well I, the things likely, cost money it does and yes there are some businesses and companies out there that will take a percentage of what you do and what you make to design your product for you. And there are times where we as 3D Musketeers will consider it. It's not often. 
we have to really, really, really like your product. Because if we do all your development for you and you go into hiding, well, we've just wasted a ton of time and company's money because mm -hmm. the other two hosts on here get paid for the work they do. Grant doesn't. Grant's the owner. And that's what happens. Right, Thomas? We, we write nice big fat checks to the government every year, don't we? And we do it with a smile. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> he is shaking his head no. Because, <laughs> you know, Thomas, you have to talk these things. Otherwise, our listeners out in the land of iTunes and Spotify oh, and yeah, Google Podcasts right. and all the other fringe ones, they can't see you. Yeah. Uh, enthusiastically... No, I don't like writing the big check to the government every year. <laughs> yeah, man, I don't either. It, uh, that killed us. Um, but it's the name of the game, right? That's that's the way she goes. And you need to understand that process too. Taxes are a problem. I should ask my accountant to come on and be a guest. That'd be a cool guest. That would be good. I don't know if he'd be a good guest. No. I always find accountants to be dry. I know an accountant, and he's pretty crazy. So I at least have one that I know of that's not dry. We should invite him. What the hell? Let's see. Yeah, it could be very good. Because, dude, mismanaging money can really screw you. And it, 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 look, we, we are very clear when you spend money with us where it goes. We show you where it's being spent. Whew, excuse me. We record late at night because some of us aren't on Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> and that means one of us has to stay up really late to record. That's why even though these windows behind me face east, you've never actually seen them lit up. <laughs> and because daylight savings time now means that it gets dark at 6 o'clock. It's dark so, so – I think it gets dark at, uh, at 4 up here. That's what it feels like. Yeah. Yeah. Grant, we're at a higher latitude, so. Is this, is it that different? Yeah, it's yeah. dark at like four o'clock. Okay, but it's like seven thirty where you are right now, right? Oh yeah, I it, mean, yeah, I mean, eight, the, the darkness is not. Eight, I, I was just saying, it gets really, really dark here really, really early. Well, and also, right. it you know, by the same token, in the summer, the sun comes up at like four in the morning, so you got to have blackout curtains. Does it really? Yeah. Dude, I love living in Florida. It doesn't come up before 6 a.m. any part of the You're year. You're so much closer to the equator. Don't remind me. It was 85 degrees out today. <laughs> it's currently 89 in my office. <laughs> Oof. I think... Uh, and 32% ambient humidity. It sucks just, in here right now. Just for funsies. Let's hmm. see. Let's get the weather forecast. I don't know how cold it is outside, but if I had to guess, it was under. It's probably under ten or twenty. <laughs> oh, all right, all right, boys, come on, let's pull up the weather forecast. Who's it's gonna... okay? So it's not that cold. It's like thirty degrees. It is. So it's pretty good. <laughs> what was your high today? Uh, forty, I think. <laughs> My low yeah. today is higher than your high. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's not surprising. <laughs> Yeah, so exactly. We were we had a high of 80 degrees today and a low of 64. Um, now, mind you, for those that don't follow the news, this is Friday the 13th, November 13th, 2020, probably the most unlucky day out there. Uh, <laughs> Florida had a hurricane come through, and it was about 20 miles north of 3D Musketeers headquarters. We didn't lose power. <laughs> did, really? Yeah, did not. Well, if we did, it happened at night, and... Didn't notice. We have big enough battery backups that the shop will run for at least 12 hours without any power at all. Uh, yay, car batteries. Um, <laughs> you, you all can crucify me later. I know they should be deep cycle marine batteries. I don't give a damn. Deep cycle marine batteries are three times the price. But, um, yeah, we had a hurricane come through. Uh, all it really did was shake all the moss out of the trees. So. <laughs> well, now your oh, trees wait, have no, no moss. My, my, mom's, my mom's bougainvillea tree in her front yard did fall over that that was a casualty and south tampa always floods south tampa floods when it rains so there was a ton of water in south tampa and 
some of you might have seen the viral video of Miami being flooded and the dude driving around in a Lamborghini. I think it was a Huracan. It was a Huracan Spider. Pretty sure it was a Huracan Spider. <laughs> because they're mid-engine and their air intakes are on the top of the car. So as long as you're driving fast enough and the water doesn't come in the doors, that's actually a pretty decent car for when it's flooding. Because the air like, intakes really immediately. High. Huh? He got swamped like immediately though. No. He the, the video is of two cars completely stuck, and then in comes a Lamborghini and he drives away. And the uh. water is coming up over the hood as he's driving, so he had to slow down. Um yeah, it was pretty high floodwaters, and that, that's kind of typical. I believe there was uh, over 10 inches of rain, um, and it was mm, hurricane, uh, uh, it was borderline tropical storm hurricane ETA, E-T-A, uh, mm -hmm. which is funny when you're getting updates about E-T-A. Yeah, that's yeah. Weird. E-T-A, oh, yeah, yeah. That's... You can see that, that bit of a problem. Um, yeah, so that that was a bit of a weird one here. But, yeah, we're expecting a high of 84 tomorrow with a low of 66. Humid. Oh, uh, currently outside. Oh, well, okay. Well, it's not going to tell me currently, but fine. The high was 80 degrees today. Guess the ambient humidity outside today. 80%. Huh? 80%. Nope. Higher than that. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Hmm. Yeah, gross. 98. 98% <laughs> oh. ambient humidity. Oh. It's basically raining. That's disgusting. Anyways, look. We're we're, yeah. we're clearly we've 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 hit our topic limit for the night and we we try <laughs> to hit an hour per episode, but that's okay. Sometimes we're a little bit short. Tad wouldn't know anything about that. Next one will be that. longer. Ooh. Sorry, Tad, had to throw out a short joke in there for you. Autumn, <laughs> I can reach through this screen. <laughs> or choke through why, the screen. Why are you little? <laughs> Golden Age Simpsons. Oh, gosh. So good. God, the Simpsons is good. That's classic, classic, classic comedy, especially the older stuff. I was about to say, the it, in Greece. It, it was super good. <laughs> you, you're right. Point. It was super good. Let me make sure there's nothing we didn't cover because, yeah. you know, I, I just want to make sure... Yeah, mark viability. Cheap like Borsch as it should be. Yeah, I mean I thought we were gonna be talking longer on this. I guess I I didn't rant as much as I was expecting. We We didn't let you we didn't You're let getting you. you're getting more concise, Grant. That's a big old that's either a, what it's kind of demon did you make a pact with pact recently? With. <laughs> Faustian What pact. actually happened is Grant went to the hospital, died, they flash cloned him, and this is flash cloned Grant which has a, a, a chemical imbalance in the brain. Thomas, I have a not. Flash clone already. It's called Jonathan, and it's my brother. Oh, yeah, yeah. My Flash clone fell and into a... And he has all a, the downsides uh, of a Flash clone. Yeah, Aww. my Flash clone <laughs> fell into a uh, taffy puller, and that's why he's so much taller. <laughs> taffy puller. Yeah, it was horrifying, but I mean... Is that it? He's like Gonzo right when the, they put... Is it the pigeon? Is, 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 is that your clone? No, no, my, my twin brother's my clone, my Flash clone. So you say you guys have the same problem. Yeah, except oh, mine's but taller yours, than yours, me. But he's also fraternal. Yeah. I have a yeah. mirror image identical twin. So he looks Rough. just like me. Yeah. Um, no, I, shave. I, I, we, Otherwise, that would be a problem. He does shave-ish. I know he does, but That's don't you ever do it, because that would be really just a hard time. One day me. I will. Maybe I'll do something stupid, too. Like, just, like, do a weird, weird facial Mutton chops. Hair. Uh, I, I think you can rock it. Right off. Both of you mutton chops. Oh, God. Tomorrow. Um, no, I, I was going to go with, uh, you know, when when they took blood samples at the hospital, they must have injected me with some microchips and and and, and, and all of the COVID. <laughs> all of it. 5G. Oh. You're, 5G. All, you're all wired up for 5G now. I don't feel like I'm wired up. <laughs> I don't feel any faster than I was a week ago. Ugh. And if there's one thing Sonic the Hedgehog has taught me is you gotta go fast. Gotta go fast. Gotta go fast. Philosophy that I've taken since I was eight, six years, four years old. I don't know how young was I when I played Sonic for the first time. Sega Genesis was was the first for me, but yeah, we didn't we didn't have a Sega Genesis because well, we, we had Sonic Adventure do... on the GameCube, right? Yeah, yeah. I had I don't know I 
I had a Sega Genesis for a little bit. It might not have been mine. Maybe it was a friend's. I remember, I remember it, it uh, here. But the the console that the consoles I actually still have, I still have our Dreamcast and our Super Nintendo. Oh, Dreamcast, you have a Dreamcast. was awesome. That's Dreamcast a weird was one. way ahead of its time, and it did not do anywhere near as well as it should have. It, it still works. It still works to this day. And my SNES is not yellowed. It's in very good. Oh, that's impressive. You've taken good care of it. Yeah, yeah nice. I have. And it still works. It actually still plugged into my TV. I cannot that actually run so it. That is so nice. Because I have Dang. a television old enough that can still do that. Good old I have, CRT. Not I a have CRT, the, not that old. No. I have the uh, Super Nintendo. Um, the newer the one? SNES, the SNES Mini, yeah. The one that they made, which is basically just a little Raspberry Pi inside I was gonna say, of a if you're shell. Gonna, if you're going to do that, just do a, a Pi 4 and a MAME engine. Get all the old school controllers. but No, you know, but it USB. looks cute. And <laughs> I didn't have to do all of that. So. The fact Thomas, that they didn't do it with the N64, though, I'm still bummed about that. Thomas, Look, we, I am the kind of person that you want because I'll buy your product because it's convenient for me. So <laughs> that's it. Plain well, that's and simple. the whole thing with like pirating right people wouldn't pirate if it's more convenient to just go the regular way that's true that's why netflix people still pay for it and yeah. pirating has gone down i think a lot of that is because you know a, a lot a lot of the the old school ways to do it are taken down and the government now gives a damn about it but yeah you know that's and you know that, that's something we should touch on pirating software in product development do not you can get your entire patent invalidated because you don't have legit copies of the CAD programs that you're using. And look, you can do a lot of this work yourself. And if you join our class system, coming soon, TM, whenever I get around to it. TM, uh, TM, TM. That, we are going to teach you how to do a lot of that stuff yourself. So oddly, you don't have to pay us. Unless you want the convenience of doing it. If you are all about saving money, save it. And expertise. We want you. Right. We and want expertise. you to save it. Yes. And that's part of the trick. When you pay us to help you, when you pay us to do the CAD modeling, you get back and forth communication with myself, Tad, maybe one of our other designers, potentially Thomas, depending on what programs. You get all of that involved. If you are a part of our class system and you decide to do it on your own, we will have once a week AMAs, maybe twice if I'm feeling a little special, um, but at least once a week AMAs where we come on to a private Slack or Discord channel, haven't figured that one out yet, where we discuss what you're going through and how we can help you get there and how we can help get you over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house you go, because that's what we're here to do. Yes. I use an old school nursery rhyme. We should have hard cut alliterate. the podcast on that. That would have been perfect. You can hard Through cut the, the podcast. <laughs> on that. No, no, because we we, we we have to do our closer, right? We have to we have to yeah. thank our sponsors. We have to remind people to check out the previous episode of the podcast, Brad's Wish, chapter ten. Although we called it episode ten, so probably that one will say episode ten. But episode 10 is Brad's Wish, and if you haven't listened or watched it, go back. We're going to put the link in this description as well, and we're going to do it for a few more episodes, uh, where you can donate. Help Make-A-Wish Foundation. Yes, the last podcast is all about Make-A-Wish. There are some onions cut. That was, that was a tough one. I mean, look, it was great. It's really great to hear, especially from young makers that are hard in this industry that love this kind of thing that could potentially make a career out of it um that's exciting for us but you know his excitement for it is the reason he's big into it now is because of some of his his medical problems and thankfully he's above and beyond and you know, so before we posted, that episode was recorded a, a week in advance so that um, his, his mom could go through it, the Make-A-Wish people could go through it, make sure everything was copacetic. It was. Um, but the dog, there's a story about the dog that he didn't tell us. Because Hope, he got Hope when the treatment started, I believe. I will have to go back and find the exact story. Um but yeah, his mom's like, I'm surprised he didn't tell you about Hope. I'm like, what do you mean? He said, 
think about how old hope is like hope's like one or two oh crap hope is one or no. two i feel like <laughs> i actually put that one together and i was like hmm this dog's named hope the dog is two ish years old hold on it wait yeah and i'm like putting the yarn together and then like <laughs> finally when i put that final tack in i just start crying <laughs> i'm like oh <laughs> We're glad we're we're all glad that Brad's yeah. okay and. Um, but honestly, you should go check out that episode because Brad it's a good was, one. has and will probably for a while be the coolest person that's been on this podcast. So Brad's the real MVP, right? He's the yeah. real MVP. He really is. Mm-hmm. And that's not minimum viable product. That's most valuable podcast. Most valuable guest, podcaster. I don't, know. <laughs> don't know. I don't know, Got man. It. Uh, anyways, Perfect. as always, this episode is supported by 3D Musketeers. If you, you, yes, you, have an idea that you want to be come made to real, us. come over to the dark side. I don't do a this good... This way. Because yeah, I, I, they can see what this way looks like, Tad. You have to describe it. Sometimes... I'll, I'll describe all of Tad's actions. Uh, he... Oh, he's sitting back. He's... Oh, he's got... Uh, binoculars, Finger binoculars, and he's, uh, and he's got ears, <laughs> and and he's got a sandwich, and he's flapping it around. <laughs> oh, and, oh, and he's reeling. He's reeling something piece? in. I think it was piece or two. Is that a big fish, Tad? Is are you reeling in a really large two oh, boxes? You're framing us up. Reeling. Oh. That's really you guys are terrible cool. charades. Oh, are, 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 are we okay? Look, to you're, you're saying you? we're terrible at charades, but there's I two of us terrible at describing one. it. You might just be bad at charades. I think you're bad at charades. All right, fine, <laughs> fine. I'm bad at charades. Enough. Yes, we're gonna do charades on a podcast that's also audio only. Audio oh. only. <laughs> oh, you were doing like two words, real something. Okay, like a movie. Uh, movie cameras yeah, used to like be a... hand driven. I have one. A hand-driven one? Of course you do. I, I have I, I, I have a small little collection of very, very old camera gear. I have an affinity for old military clocks, and camera gear. Camera and clocks, stuff. yes. Clocks, too. Anything old and mechanical, I love. Um, I would get it, but it is beyond the, my weight limit that I can pick up. But I have a 19... I have a briefcase from an M2... Uh, those were uh, four by four, or four by sorry, six by fours or six by sixes. Um, really, really cool uh, vehicles for the U.S. military, but they had a 24 volt system. Mm. And the problem was batteries don't come in 24 volts; they come in six. And you needed to get all the batteries to the same rough voltage. So it's got a 300 volt voltmeter, a 1,000 amp ammeter with shunt. And a massive 5,000 watt resistor pack to drain batteries down to the right voltages. And it's all in this really big metallic briefcase. It says U.S. Air Force. You can take it apart and see all the years on the back of it, all the times it was calibrated. Oh, love it. Love it, love it, love it. Anyways. Hardcore. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, everyone's got the stuff they love. I'm going to digress here. We're going to get out of here. Thank you all for joining us today. This is part one of what is likely going to be a three-part series on kind of a low-level understanding of product development. Again, I'm Grant. We have Tad off to my, I guess this would be my left. Let's see, yep, Tad is off to my left. And Thomas, as always, is right below me. How's it going? Hey, hey, stop looking up my shirt. <laughs> Damn voyeurs. Montana's weird. <laughs> you're telling me florida's got way more people who are way weirder by you've got weirder people per capita Grant. that's I'm that is only that all. is only because florida has the weird law where all arrest records are public so as a reporter all you have to do is sit on the mugshot websites and just keep hitting f5 until something cool comes okay Grant, perception is reality don't you know well, yes i'm aware that's it's an unfortunate reality. Yes, yes, I know. <laughs> Anyways, gents, it's been really cool hanging out with you guys as always. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next two weeks. I, I think we're going to have fun, and I'm going to try to schedule a, a guest, um, and you'll hopefully be hearing about him next episode. So everyone take care out there. 
call your loved ones. I'm going to say that every week until I forget because it's been a week. You probably forgot to call them during the week. So call them again. Let them know you're around. Tell them you love them. Um, then, yeah, keep making awesome. This is Chapter 11, Product Development, The Beginning.